Our first question, which we've already touched on, is the fact that Bitcoin has been falling. Um, it fell below 10K just today. And some people online have said that Bitcoin's price falling has been connected to Donald Trump tweeting negative things about Bitcoin. Um, but other people say that Trump tweeting about Bitcoin, negative or positive, is just in general a great thing because it brings more attention, um, brings Bitcoin just to the, into the zeitgeist more, so to say. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I'm definitely into the, in the second camp. Um, my initial reaction was this tweet is extremely bullish. If Donald Trump loves Bitcoin or hates Bitcoin, the fact that he's mentioning it, uh, basically highlighting uh, the advantages of Bitcoin to the entire world. Um, so I thought that tweet was extremely bullish. Um, and within the first half hour of the tweet, uh, Bitcoin did rise about 2%. Not a lot for Bitcoin, but if you're talking about initial reactions, I think that um, that was pretty clear. And of course, that tweet came out on, uh, uh, on Friday. Um, and then we had some mainstream media this morning trying to attribute the fall today uh, from the tweet last Friday. Now, this is a market that uh, generates most of the volumes uh, over the weekend. So it's very difficult for me to imagine that, that tweet actually was responsible for Bitcoin falling. I think that uh, even though um, the even though I don't think that this is what happened, but um, you know, if we want to look at how how timing works, uh, the Fed was talking right over here, and that actually uh, just after that last week we saw the price of Bitcoin falling. All of this is like really smoke and mirrors, though. I, a lot of people like to attribute um, uh, price action to a news event. And, you know, a lot of us make our living that way, so who can blame them? But um, if you zoom out a little bit, you'll see that none of this really uh, has had any real noticeable impact on the price of Bitcoin. Here's the, the monster rally that we've been seeing since uh, mid-February. Uh, we hit a peak. Uh, late in June, a pullback, and now we're in a range. The range is approximately from 10K to, uh, to 14K, the high of 13.8. If we pass that on the upside, we have a strong breakout. No doubt we'll see a lot more FOMO, people buying in. That'll, give, uh, that'll pave the way for much higher levels, even a test of the all-time high of $20,000. On the, on the bottom side, things are not as clear. Yes, we have that psychological support line of 10K, but as you mentioned, it has been broken a little bit, so it's not a strong support line at this point, but uh, we can see that 9K uh, exactly was as exact uh, psychological support. Um, and many different chartists will draw their lines a bit differently. You could probably name about a dozen uh, support lines below that. But if we do look, let's say, uh, just make a rising trend line from that surge on April 2nd. I believe the surge on April 2nd was really when things, re when things started uh, kicking off for this market. Um, you can see this kind, of, uh, this kind of pattern holding here. Um, and you know this is not like a you know a strong support resistance line, but rather just looking at the trend overall. And we can see that we've been above this line, below this line, but overall, um, you know, even if we come down to 9K or even at, even at eight and a half, I would say this this trend line still holds uh, still holds weight, where we're in um, an upward trend overall. So um, try not to confuse short term price movements, uh, you know, with long term trends. So I guess my next question has to do now with altcoins because they seem to be having even heavier losses than Bitcoin. For example, um, Ethereum lost around 17% of its value in 24 hours. So why do you think that altcoins are having much more significant losses than Bitcoin right now? That's an excellent question. Um, and it does kind of fit in with, uh, with what we've been seeing lately. It's quite consistent uh, that Bitcoin is the leader of this rally. So ever since the April 2nd surge, Bitcoin has been firmly in the driver's seat. Um, and the reason for this is that mostly people are gravitating towards Bitcoin. Bitcoin is basically consolidating uh, the entire crypto market. We see, we've seen Bitcoin's dominance rising. That's because most of the excitement throughout this rally has been specifically surrounding Bitcoin. Um, so some of the altcoins 
uh, you know, on the way up. You know, so, so when we're in that kind of dynamic where Bitcoin is dominant and we're in uh, a bull market, I don't know if we can call it a bull market just yet, but let's say we are in a bull run at the moment. Uh, so when the prices are moving up, Bitcoin is going to tend to outperform. And then when we see the pullbacks, uh, then we'll see that the altcoins are going to get hit a lot, uh, a lot more than Bitcoin would as, as traders uh, gravitate towards safety. Okay, so now moving on to just the general market again. In a recent interview with Bloomberg, CZ of Binance said that he's been seeing about 60% um, of the trading volume on Binance coming from retail investors, which is the same as last year, as opposed to institutional investors. So does this, um, could this be considered a sign that the space lacks maturity, do you think? Well, I think it's quite, it's still early. I mean, um, we've been talking about these retail investors coming into the market uh, s pretty much since the fall in the beginning of 2018. I mean, this has been uh, kind of a market uh, theme. Um, however, and, and as we've stated in the last few videos that we've done, um, even though this entire, uh, this entire rally has been driven largely on the speculation that institutional players are about to enter. Actually, the institutional players don't have any major gateways open at the moment. All of the institutional players that we've talked about, uh, you know, mainly Bact and Fidelity, uh, the Nasdaq, um, you know, and so on, they haven't actually opened their doors yet. I mean, they're still um, on the verge, right? Fidelity is just testing their first few clients. Uh, Back said that they're going to start testing very shortly. Um, however, the only, you know, if somebody on Wall Street wants to buy Bitcoin at the moment, the only real option they have is the futures contracts on the CME. So those futures contracts, as we know, are cash settled. So there's no actual Bitcoin involved in those transactions. So at the moment, there isn't really any option for those institutional players to buy Bitcoin. However, uh, that, those options are very likely to be opened up within the next few days even. Um, so CZ's uh, comments, they're, ap they're apropos. Everything that we've been seeing, all of this rally has been driven largely by retail, uh, retail investors specifically retail investors who are already familiar with the crypto market, who are getting excited that the institutional players are finally entering. Now, this could be a situation of buy the rumor and sell the news, right? The institutional players finally get here and then they're you know, on the sell side instead of on the buy side. It, it's happened before. Um, however, what we do know is that once uh, those gateways are open, those, those bridges are built, it brings more liquidity into the market uh, and much larger cash flows. And um, generally speaking, over time, those cash flows would, uh, are more likely to have a positive impact on the price, especially on the level that we're talking about here. All right, so my last question now goes back to a specific, uh, specific uh, cryptocurrency, Litecoin, because the halving is going to be taking place in August, which is gonna reduce the block rewards by 50%. So um, do you think Basically, what do you think is going to happen to the token after this event? Uh, that's an excellent question. I know that uh, Litecoin is um, probably one of the strongest cryptos out there. I mean, it's the first fork off of Bitcoin. Um, it has an incredibly strong community. Uh, I think that it's going to really depend. We've seen a lot of, um, a lot of speculation uh, based on this halving event. A lot of the time we know that halving events uh, have a tendency to be priced in before they actually occur. Um, and even throughout this, this rally, I mean, on February 11th, right, we can see that pop was a lot bigger than Bitcoin's. Litecoin was really arguably one of the leaders in this entire rally that we're seeing now. However, we do see a massive pullback so far. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, that's in line with what we've been seeing through the rest of the market. So, um, as long, look, Litecoin has, even though it has a very strong community, it has a very strong test in front of it. And that's going to be about adoption. So the more we see, um, you know, merchants accepting Litecoin and people paying with Litecoin, uh, that will cause the, the price to rise long term. Everything else is going to be, is going to be speculation. If you guys want to participate in the Bitcoin revolution, check out our merch store in the link below. Right now we're having a 30% discount for all Cointelegraph YouTube subscribers. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.